70 players remain. The first ever PGA Tour playoffs for the FedEx Cup. And the third event takes place in Chicago. Last week, the reigning players champion outdueled the world's number one in a head-to-head -head showcase for the first time in six attempts. Tiger put up a vintage-like battle with Mickelson, but Mickelson took him out today. But Tiger Woods finished just behind, and another second place finish this week would catapult him to the top of the standings. After top tens in Boston, a win in the Windy City could vault Steve Stricker or Rory Sabatini to the number one spot in the points race. And with an invitation to the Tour Championship on the line, defending champion Trevor Immelman needs a good showing to move from his current rank of 38. There's a lot on the line at Cog Hill. The PGA Tour playoffs for the FedEx Cup continue at the BMW Championship next. The PGA Tour is proud to bring you the race for the 2007 FedEx Cup. Now, here's the 2007 BMW Championship. Tiger Woods enters this week's PGA Tour playoff event as the clear favorite to not only claim victory, but to also take the lead in the FedEx Cup points race, a lead which Phil Mickelson currently has, but he chose not to be here this week. The door is open for Tiger. A hot start at Cog Hill, already a three-time winner in this place in pursuit of win number four. Already in the red numbers, starting at the 10th. Another birdie at the par 5, 11th from eight and a half feet took him immediately to two under par. He's not the only one that could mount a serious charge this week and take over that number one spot playing alongside Tiger. Steve Stricker, already a winner at the first playoff event, the Barclays at Westchester. That is a hole out at number 13. It was the most difficult hole on the golf course last year. No problem for Stricker today. Playing alongside in this group as well, K.J. Choi, who withdrew last week because of injury, but said he would be back in Chicago, and he is. They're all letting Mickelson know they came to play. Get ready for an exciting day. Round one of the BMW Championship begins now. Just moments away from Soldier Field, home of the 1985 Super Bowl champions, the Chicago Bears, and Wrigley Field, which houses the Chicago Cubs, who are in a heated pennant race in the NL Central. The PGA Tour has made its way to Cog Hill Golf and Country Club. Steeped in tradition, the longest running regular PGA Tour event turns a new page in the history books as the BMW Championship serves as the third leg of the inaugural PGA Tour playoffs. 70 players remain in the race for the FedEx Cup. 66 are here this week, and first and second round tee times have been moved up considerably due to weather concerns on Thursday and Friday. The greens are receptive, and Kevin Sutherland is another man making an early statement at three under par. This for birdie at 15, already an eagle at 11, another birdie at 14. That is back to back for Sutherland. Justin Rose, here he is at the par 3-6, playing 230 yards today. A young man who has been banging on the door to victory. He hasn't broken through on the PGA Tour yet, but emphasize the yet. He would go on to make birdie on that lengthy hole. Then at number seven, at four under par, Justin Rose climbs to minus five. And we'll take a look at our current leaderboard brought to you by Titleist. Rose at the top of the page above Jonathan Bird, a winner earlier this year at the John Deere Classic. And Adam Scott at three under par through six holes. Tiger Woods on page one, a familiar place for the three-time champion at Cog Hill. And Tiger Woods readying for his birdie attempt here. Got out of the gate well. Birdies at 10 and 11, all pars from that point. And uh, this uh, lengthy birdie putt just inside 25 feet after a, a rare miscue uh, with the wedge from around the green, Rolf. Yeah, he did not have a very good lie over there, but still it was not a good shot by his standards. And throughout this day, Roger, we're going to be seeing that these greens do not have a lot of pace to them, running at about 10 on the step meter, so this putt's actually going to be a little bit slow. Yeah, the humidity very, very high. Green's kind of sticky. <laughs> Nothing sticky about that. 
Well, kind of uh, an unlikely way for Tiger to make a birdie at a par five, but nevertheless, he will get to three under par. Now to 13. Pat Perez for a birdie. Eagled number 11. Start his day. Just like that, three under par. Stuart Appleby for Eagle here at the par 5 11th. There have been two registered here today. Three now, excuse me. Four now, excuse me. <laughs> it's growing exponentially. And over at nine, Justin Rose. This for a birdie. Hit it on the green and drew it back. No matter. Wow. And Brett Wetterick for a birdie. Big move last week, huh? Tied for second, moved 29 spots on the FedEx. Wow. That's the only putt I've seen going uphill like that that's been made. Back at the eighth, Troy Madison. This is for birdie. Oh, clever. Now on the green at the 10th. Justin Rose has a 20-foot birdie try. He's in Hello. the zone. And the birdie putt of Tiger Woods from underneath the hole here at the third. This is where you want to putt from. Bang. Here on the fifth, Stewart Sink for birdie. So Sink gets it to four under four back now of Rose. Back to the red hot Justin Rose for his eighth birdie of the day. This is from six feet. Put the ball down once, Roger realigned it. There's not much here, though. Oh, wow. No mysteries today. Eight under par for Justin Rose. Back to the sixth and Jonathan Bird trying to get to minus five. So Bird catches up with Woods. And his three back of Justin Rose. To three. Where Pat Perez has this downhill birdie putt. Just over 14 feet. And nicely done. So Pat Perez moves it to five under par. Jonathan Bird for birdie at seven to move to six under. Nicely done. Jonathan Bird, seven birdies today. Just one bogey that moves him to six under par. Now just one off the lead. As we move over to eight. And Stewart sink for birdie. You can see that ridge. Here comes the ball right up. Yeah, it's tough. It's kind of, oh, hello. No You're problem. not meant to do that. Living up to his name. Outrageous. Back to eight. And Jonathan Bird now trying to grab a share of the lead. And that is three straight birdies. You know, we're on pace for the lowest single round course average ever in this championship. It's currently 69.4. It's never been below 70 in the 403 previous rounds. They're just lighting it up. Camillo at 15 yeah, for Eagle. Yeah, this for Eagle, first of the day, Kelly. So Camillo Vajegas to six under par. They're just tearing it up today. Yeah, they certainly are. Ideal scoring conditions. And over at 15, the par five. Troy Madison for a birdie to get to five under. Nice up and down from the left bunker for him. And uh, oh, there he is, uh, <laughs> known at home as El Hombre <laughs> Araña, the Spider-Man. <laughs> I reckon we, we could nominate him to be a representative in Dancing with the Stars, don't I you think? I think so, Nick. I bet he does a great Macarena. This one to get to six under, <laughs> getting the shot back. He dropped at 16, so Pajegas within one of the lead. And Jonathan Bird is our first round leader, shooting an eight under 64. After a lengthy weather delay this morning, Tiger Woods finally teed off in round two of the BMW Championship shortly after noontime locally. His round began with five straight pars after a series of short birdie opportunities slipping through his claws. But finally, at the par 3-6, measuring 222 yards today, he found a little magic. He put it in range and cashed in on his first birdie of the day. Currently third in this FedEx Cup points race. A second place finish this week would put him on top of the point standings heading to the Tour Championship next week at Eastlake. 
Camilo Vajegas opened with a 65 this week and continues to roll. Here's his second at the par 4 10th. A laser, and it would result in a birdie. And speaking of birds, your overnight leader, Jonathan Bird, who opened with the lowest round of his PGA Tour career as far as that first round is concerned. His second at the par four third would also result in a birdie. He continues right where he left off at Justin Rose, who opened with a 29 on the front side yesterday, but he bogeyed the 15th from this very position in round one. Today it resulted in an eagle. With more than 100 years of history, the BMW Championship has taken on an entirely new feel and position on the schedule as it becomes a critical part of this brand new competition. Only seven rounds remain in the inaugural PGA Tour playoffs and just three at Coghill Golf and Country Club. Today, it's not a fight to make the cut because there isn't one but it is a fight to survive tough weather conditions. It was a long night in the Chicago area with heavy rains and winds moving through this morning, as you can see, was no different. Once again, the tee times have been adjusted in an effort to dodge this rough weather. We've already had one significant halt in play, and hopefully we can avoid another. It's a dirty business out there, as you can see, but the lift clean and place rule is in effect. It has been all week long. The players all trying to go low. Some of them doing a better job of it than others. Just a moment ago, this was Aaron Baddeley for birdie at number three, the par four after going out in 33. Baddeley puts together back-to-back -back birdies at two and three. He is now five under on the day and eight under for the BMW Championship. Now we'll head out live to the ninth and Jonathan Bird with a chance to get a share of the lead. So the man who shot 64 in round one, no one could better him that day, continues to contend for this championship. Now, Justin Rose tied with Camilo Bejegas. This is our current leaderboard brought to you by Titleist, Aaron Baddeley right behind them and charging in round two. Just a few clicks down, there's Tiger Woods, who's already won three times at Cog Hill, 97, 99, and 2003. He finished second in each of the last two times he was here. Let's pick it up now with Hunter Mahan at the 17th for birdie. Gets him to five under for the championship. Four shots off the lead. Let's go over to 14. And the par three, 180 yards today. Sergio, nice shot here. I wish you could have seen the ball had just slammed, buried in the green. Nice putt. Sergio moves to minus four. Par five ninth. Stricker's third now. Soft little swing and a soft little approach. Jeff Ogilvy. This is a bit of a shocker. Jeff having a nightmare. Seven over. And probably going to get two back. Uh, one back. That's not going to help the uh, the emotions too much. Tiger Woods for birdie at the ninth. Just like that. You just know it. You get a feeling you watched him long enough. To the par three fourteenth. Stuart Appleby just bogeyed 13. He doubled bogeyed 13 yesterday. 180 yards to the par three. Stuart two under for his round today. Oh, that's a good one. That was a moment ago, and now the birdie putt. Uphill very slow. Going to get it there? Yes. All right, back to nine. And Steve Stricker to finish up for his birdie here. Well, that's the same score that Tiger Woods made, but a much differently played hole. <laughs> it was Aaron Baddeley at seven for birdie. Saw him hit that beautiful second shot in there. Beautifully done for Aaron Baddeley. Had a chance last week at the Deutsche Bank Championship. Now closes to within one of the lead of Camilla Bejegas. This putt is just outside of 10 feet. He's a perfect 24 for 24 from within 10 feet. But once you creep outside that range, he's missed four. 
24 for 24. Yeah, and inside 10 feet. See, chalk another one up for me. Back to 10. Steve Stricker with a short range putt for birdie, Mark. He's got it in a real good spot here, Kelly. It's about five feet. I'll tell you what, Steve Stricker has impressed a lot of people. Justin Rose has a birdie putt. We see he made a real big effort to keep that, get that follow through going, so. Now Tiger for birdie at 11, just out, just to inside 35 feet, Mark. And not a lot of break to it, Daddy. But as you said, a little bit slow. Is it enough? Oh. Plenty, perfect. Yes, oh, one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, one. And over to three. Ouch. Yeah. What does he do with that right leg? Cool. 1 800 chiropractor. That's Quick. A, that's got to be <laughs> knee problems down the road. <laughs> well, for now, it seems to be working just fine. Now, with this birdie putt here to get to 11 under and a two shot lead in this championship. And he gets it. Five under par on his round today. Aaron Badalay, who was uh, having quite a day. This for birdie. Yeah. So Aaron Badalay, eight birdies, two bogeys, a 65, nine under, two back of Camilo Bajegas. Stricker now for birdie at 14. Mark? This will be a quick one, Jimmy. Pretty much straight downwind and very much downhill. You want to talk about the difference a day can make. Yesterday, this was the 15th hardest hole on the course. Today, the seventh hardest. Ah, that's one way. That's one way to dispute the numbers. Steve Stricker. We move ahead to 16. Second shot for Jonathan Bird. Pin way back in the left-hand corner. Very scary. Shot here, and that's a oh, fantastic look at that. From 134 yards, and uh, Nick, a very accessible hole location today, kind of back center. Just as long as you don't go to that back bunker, uh, we've seen a lot of birdies here. Beautiful shot from Justin Rose, so he'll have that short putt to get it to nine under par, moving to a tie for the lead. Now we go to Tiger Woods on the green at the par 5 15th. He is currently three strokes off the lead, and this putt is for birdie to get to seven under par and move within two of the lead. Seventeen. Jonathan Bird with this uphill left to right breaking putt and a chance to move it to nine under and into a share of the lead. Oh yeah, very nicely done. Man is stroking the ball well. Just 24 putts in his opening round. And he is making it look easy. Jonathan Bird and Aaron Baddeley tied atop the leaderboard after two rounds at nine under. Four players right behind them, including Tiger Woods at eight under as we head into the weekend. 25 miles southwest of downtown Chicago on a beautiful Saturday in September. One of the most familiar layouts on the PGA Tour. Cog Hill Golf and Country Club, one of the premier public golf facilities in the country. A total of four courses here. This is the number four course, the Dubs Dread course. One of the venues here, which has hosted the second oldest professional golf tournament in the United States. 
as we look ahead to Atlanta next week. This is how Tiger, who began the day one off the lead, began his round. A birdie at the first to get to nine under, and at that time, into a tie for the lead. Tiger spent the first couple of days with now his good friend, Steve Stricker. Played with him in the first two rounds, and Stricker, who also began the day one off the lead, is in the second to last group. A beautiful second shot there to the par four third. Stricker would make that birdie to get to nine under. And then just a short time ago, Tiger dialing in his second from the par four seventh from just 92 yards away, gets it to within three feet. Another birdie for Tiger to take the lead by himself at 10 under, but then just after that, this was Aaron Badley who began the day tied for the lead with Jonathan Bird in the final group. A birdie for Badley at the sixth. The long par three to tie Tiger. And then just a moment ago, Tiger's second shot at the par four eight coming up the hill from 142 yards. Woods already two under through the first seven holes. Looking for another one at the eighth. He's got that to within four and a half feet. So now we join you live with Tiger on the prowl for his second straight birdie and his third in the first eight holes. Dan Hicks, Johnny Miller, our entire NBC golf crew here. And uh, Tiger Woods off that uh, tie for second last week. Johnny wants to take advantage of Mickelson's absence. <laughs> this to regain his one shot lead. He obviously loves his course winning three times. He's hit every fairway, every green today. He's not going to stiff. And it's just an inside right edge putt. So a perfect putt for him to make. So much on Tiger's resume, all the majors, all the titles. Is he going to be the first ever to win this FedEx Cup as the playoff push now shares the spotlight with one of the country's great cities? And so many stories just continuing to be weaved through this FedEx Cup playoffs. None really bigger at this point than Steve Stricker, who was an All-American golfer at the University of Illinois. This was just a moment ago. Stricker's second birdie in the last five holes. So Stricker moves it to 10 under. And now, as we take a look at our leaderboard, brought to you by Titleist, the number one ball in golf. Stricker right behind Tiger, along with Aaron Badley, who's playing in that final group, with Jonathan Bird, who's at nine under, even so far on his round today. Bird and Badley in that final group. And there is Camilo Bijegas. This could be a very big day and weekend for Camilo as he's trying to make it into the final 30. Now let's go out to Steve Stricker in the fairway at eight. It's interesting, too. We were walking down the fairway. Steve called me over, and he was still talking about Tiger's shots out of the rough yesterday. Aiming a little right, Mark. Is he playing a draw? Just a little bit of a draw. The wind is coming from the right. What's the feeling down there? Are they feel like the ugly stepchild being in this group compared to Tiger in front of them, or what? Well, they certainly can hear what's going on in the group ahead at both the seventh and eighth greens. Number one in greens hit this week, Mark, 84%. Steve Stricker, seven for seven today. And number one in fairways, too, Johnny. That might go in. It's almost like it's destiny for Stricker in these FedEx Cup playoffs. And this was badly for Birdie. And couldn't have been positioned better, Dan, right underneath the hole. Straight in putt. So Aaron Badley moves it to 11 under par. As we go over to 15, Dan, where Stuart Sink is playing his third. To the par five. He's got it to seven under and <laughs> should have no problem getting it to eight under. He sits at 32nd. As we get back over to Tiger Woods, who appears to be away and set to play first at 10, Raj. 120 yards left of the hole, Dan. Uh, very little wind to talk about. A perfect lie, soft green. It's open season on flag sticks, Johnny. <laughs> it is a hole location's way left. You got to be a little careful about pulling it, but uh, you got to hit it over that tree. But uh, yeah, this should be a green lighter. How about that? Just nice little hook spin to the left, and he said, 
No problem. Roger said it was easy, so I had to do it. <laughs> I just had to do it, make them look good. Well, so many sidebars to these FedEx Cup playoffs. Vijay Singh, who began the entire stretch of the playoffs in the second spot, has been slipping week after week. Remember, he missed a couple of cuts. And then he missed the cut at the Barclays, and then he barely made the cut last week. That was a birdie miss at 18. VJ shot 77 today and is at plus seven through three rounds. In the meantime, Brant Snedeker shot 65 today. That's the best round of the day so far. That was his third at the 15th. And so Snedeker playing well today. Rory Sabatini um, trying to pick it up. That was for par at 18. Tiger Woods keeping the pressure on all that's left for birdie number three in the last four holes. Just this tap in Johnny at the 10th and he's at 12 under tied with Stricker again. This for birdie. Man, you've been watching the color coded numbers throughout these playoffs. The purple six up there for Aaron Baddeley is his projected spot on the FedEx Cup point standings right now and based on the fact that he's one off the lead and the fact that he comes into this tournament in 11th spot he's in the sixth spot right now but that can change throughout the day Murph just moved him into a three-way tie getting his work done over 17 this is Adam Scott for birdie from just under 10 feet nicely done Got to go over a lot of trees, doesn't he, Gary? Well, he does, and the ones up by the green, Johnny, I estimate close to 100 feet high. I mean, they are way up there. What is the, is the whole location about right here? Yeah, that's so exactly right. So he's got to right. go over all these trees here. Unless he goes out to the right and plays a big, hard hook. His eyes are looking for a big old sweeping hook, Roger. Mm -hmm. I, I would think with this club that would be, what he would be trying to do is hit some hard hook. Does, is he carrying that five wood, Roger? Pardon me. Is he carrying Jane? that five wood? I believe so. There's that left. He pulled it. Is it going to come back? He likes it. It's a golf shot, he says. Wow, huh? that's really good. It's on a great line and hits solid. Why? How's the backspin? <laughs> <laughs> Stops on a dime. After that incredible approach shot, Tiger Woods missed his eagle attempt, but still has a birdie try. And Tiger with the short putt left for birdie, but uh, Roger certainly one that should have some movement to it. Jacobs has already uh, missed his birdie attempt. This putt now back uphill. Has not had a three putt yet this week. Remember last week struggled on the greens, had five in 72 holes. And nicely done. So Tiger Woods moves into the lead at 13 under par. Steve Stricker now in the fairway at 13 for his second shot. And the swing of Steve Stricker from 193. Oh, wow. That's certainly the closest I've seen all day. Right under the hole. Tiger Woods now for birdie at 14. And a big curler putt here on really, really fast greens. Tiger would savor this. A little tougher on the slow greens we're playing this week. He figured it out. Well, everybody's listening to Tiger Woods right now. He's making the most noise. That ear right there, a little left to righter, huh? Very little. Well, it's me, Murph, and oh, it's sorry. a very little firm up the hill, good spot to putt from. He's not letting Tiger get away, is he? Up to 18. A moment ago, this is Adam Scott for birdie. Big break. Scott has been on a birdie run. He's also had a double bogey and a bogey, but how about this end for Adam Scott? Five birdies in the last six holes. 
And look at that back nine of 30. Badly has a terrific break left to right here. Right in the center. Oh, I love the way he walks up there and just pops them in. No consternation. And up at 15, lengthy eagle putt for Tiger Woods. Chance to take the outright lead, Roger. Uphill and moving right to left. Got a good look at Vijegas' putt, which he missed, but he got a good look at the speed. Pretty slow putt. Got to be hit firmly. Oh, well, it's stretch. Yeah, a lot of guys have left it short from there, but uh, going to be a nice, easy birdie. And Tiger Woods retakes the lead at 14 under. To 17. Where Tim Clark has this putt for a birdie three chance to get to nine under. Ooh, oh, and it just slips in. Clark, 400 in his round today. Started the week 33rd in the FedEx Cup standings. Now projected to move into that magic 30 number and move on to Atlanta next week. All right, Stricker with a chance to tie Woods. Oh, yeah. Very nice. That from just over eight feet. Had a chance to talk to Steve on the range this morning. He was very relaxed. Johnny said, I'm on this run and I'm just going to ride it out. Yeah, <laughs> why not? Exactly. Yeah. And just a moment ago, Jonathan Bird over at 13 for a birdie. He's 10 under. Well done. Speaking very positively this week, he said, I came in here to win. I haven't changed my mind. Just a perfect day here outside of Chicago. Steve Stricker from the University of Illinois, so obviously a big following for him. Tiger, he's a good friend of yours. You like playing golf with him, don't you? I mean, Strix is, how, how can you not? I mean, this is one of the all-time nicest guy you, you'll ever meet, and uh, it's awesome to see him uh, come back the last two years. Aaron Baddeley for a birdie. Chance moving. to move to 14 under. And moving left to right the whole way. Has it got enough speed? Yes, it does. Beautiful putt by Baddeley. This is for a smooth little 64, folks. Round of the day, perhaps, and tie the round of the championship. It, it will erupt here if this falls in. What do you think of this putt, Mark? It's fast, huh? It is very fast. I, I thought at first, Johnny, it might bleed just a little to the right. That he just has to barely get it started. Yeah, these kind of putts, if there's any break, you got to double it because you, you can't give it a hit. So immediately the fall line will grab it. So if it's, you think it's, you know, left center, it's probably at least left edge because you got to just baby it down there unless you really are gutsy. In the fairway at 18 is Aaron Baddeley. Here's Baddeley now. That on the way from 161, a tremendous angle. Oh, Baddeley says, I might be in with you, Steve, in the final group. Now Aaron Baddeley makes his way to the green at 18, where a birdie will tie him for the lead. Just going left to right. This but is definitely not an easy putt. I mean, you should make it. What do you think? Six out of ten, but you know it's not one of those you make every time. Now that might actually be a little generous. Yeah, this is a tough putt. Well, he's awful good putter. He well, did, yes, he is. That putt he made in the last hole, I think, was a bit of an accident because it got right and then it never broke at the hole and stayed straight and went in the hole. So that was a little gift. Let's see if he can finish birdie birdie though. Four feet eleven inches. That's for a sixth birdie of the day. And no bogeys for Badley, and it's Stricker and Badley in the final group of the final round of the BMW. Second straight, 65. Steve Stricker and Aaron Baddeley tied for the lead at 15 under. Tiger Woods just one behind them. There's still 18 holes left to play. It's anyone's championship.
Welcome to the final round of the BMW Championship amid the first ever PGA Tour playoffs for the FedEx Cup and Tiger Woods in the second to last group. He's won here three times. He looks to take over the point standings again with a win here with just one event remaining. But Steve Stricker is in the final group with Aaron Badley. They come in one ahead of Tiger, tied for the lead. Stricker could take over the lead in the FedEx Cup point standings with a win. And if Badley's able to pull off a win, he could bring even more players into play for the big prize next week. Everybody just teed off. Tiger Woods just had this attempt for birdie at the first. And it looked good for a long time. So Tiger with an opening par at the first remains one behind Stricker and Badley. So with the pressure continuing to build, we check out our current leaderboard brought to you by Titleist, the number one ball in golf, Stricker and Badley just off. And you saw Tiger Woods' opening par at the first to remain one back. He's third in the FedEx Cup point standing. Stricker is second. And Phil Mickelson, who was not here this week, well, would Tim Clark cool down? His birdie putt at the par three sixth. Easy putt inside the hole. And that is four in a row, five in the first six. He doesn't have a par on his card yet. Now Steve Stricker for birdie at the fifth. And Stricker moves to 15 under. Tiger now is second at the seventh. Sand wedge from 94 yards, knocked it down. Oh, yeah. Woo! Brings it back, leaves an uphill putt. Tim Clark on the green at eight with another birdie try. And he's got another one. He walks that in, moves to 14 under, and now it's just not, okay, let's get to Atlanta. It's about winning this tournament. Exactly. And back over to the seventh, and Tiger Woods uh, lurking around another one. Tiger Woods' second birdie of the day moves him to 16 under par, tied for the lead with Aaron Baddeley. And now up at the green, and Tim Clark for 29. Imagine that. Got that left elbow out. <laughs> Very sturdy. He knew it right away, Johnny. 29. And so for the moment, Badley's tied Tiger, but that could be changing in about uh, 15 seconds, Roger. What's this should? Could. <laughs> How about will be? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give it to him, Raj. Yeah, this one goes just a little bit to the right as well. A real knee, knee knocker for him, right? Not exactly. <laughs> Two in a row. This was Rory Sabatini for his birdie at 18. This breaks pretty hard towards the water. It's not an easy putt to make. And wow. Sabatini with four birdies in the last six holes. Final round 66. To Aaron Baddeley for birdie at eight and a share of the lead. Well, he certainly got a great read off Steve Stricker's birdie putt to have very much the same line speed. Was it just right center or something? I don't think it's anything more than that. He does a couple strokes here. It's a good way to putt, folks. You got to try this. And you just walk right in. Once you see the line, put it behind it and say thank you very much. Mm, very reactive. One look and away it goes. And away he goes. At the top of the leaderboard, a three-way tie. Take that lead back now. Just like that. <laughs> And over to 15. And that is an eagle putt on the way for Stewart Sink. So he will have no problem tapping in for a birdie. Just came off a bogey, but yeah. got a good round going on. Yes, he does. Six under. Moves him back to 12 under par for the championship. Six under for the round, Johnny. You're right. So he is going to solidify a spot in Atlanta. On the green at 15, Adam Scott has this for eagle. 
He'll have to settle for birdie, moving him to 14 under. Over to ninth again. And Badley wants this to tie again, Dottie. This would be three birdies in a row to finish the side. <laughs> he putts quickly, very confident, most assured. We go back to 11 of the birdie putt for Justin Rose. Is this a tough read? Well, it looks like the ball below his feet, that little knob that comes into the green, so it might want to start right, but then break back left. Oh, he read it nicely. Good putt, Justin Rose. At the 10th, Steve Stricker for birdie and the outright lead. Not a hard putt. Is it going to turn? It is. Four and a roll for Stricker. Tiger Woods at the 12th for birdie and a share of the lead. Carrying some good it's speed, good line and here. Tiger has drilled it. <laughs> on the most difficult hole of the day from 45 feet, Tiger sends one of his Tiger-esque roars through the crowd at Cog Hill. And just like that, we've got another three-way tie. And now to Sergio Garcia in the fairway at 18. He is 150 yards to the pin. And Garcia will easily tap that in for birdie and move to 10 under. On the green at 13, Tiger Woods has a birdie try for the outright lead. And Tiger moves to 20 under par. Jim Furyk finishing up. Look where he's aiming this, Danny. Big old hook. You can see projected eighth. So making his way to Atlanta with a nice birdie at 18. One under round of 70 for Furyk. At 15, Tiger Woods is stalking. Tiger for his eagle. Roger, uh, you sensing uh, a Tiger moment? Well, <laughs> this is an uphiller and a slow putt, and it has uh, some left to right in it, but uh, it is highly makeable. No question about that. This is not uh, what you'd call a hard putt. But can you hit it hard enough, Roger? That's the, that's the deal. Can you hit it firmly enough? Good I got a feeling he can. Four birdies, no bogeys going out. He's only had 18 putts through 14 holes today. That is uh, running the table. Hey, he's had 10 one putts last week. He said, you know, he had like five three putts. And he said, I'm playing fine. If I can clean that up, I'll be OK. Well, he has not had a three putt this week. Certainly firm enough. He was just looking for it to turn a fraction to the right. It's an easy tap in birdie. Tiger Woods to 21 under par. Two shot lead. We go up to 18. And this was Camilla Bijegas finishing up at 18 for par. And by our calculations, Camilo is into the field in Atlanta. The birdie putt for Stricker. And Gary, I think this is pretty much his last gasp. I think this one has to go in. He will look back at the two par threes, 12 and 14, those iron shots, both led to bogeys. If he doesn't go on to win here. Should be moving right as it gets near the hole, and Stricker doesn't give up. That moves him to 18 under. 
three back with three to go. Well, Roger, you've uh, played a lot of golf professionally, watched a lot of golf. Uh, when this man gets it going, he can make it look awfully easy. Uh, it's unbelievable. I, I was just thinking to myself walking up this fairway, all the dreams I had as a little kid of, you know, being a great player and all that. I never dreamed about being this good. <laughs> I couldn't even dream that good. We see putting inside of seven feet. He's 12 of 12 this week. And naturally this putt, seven feet. The ability to raise your game in the major championships, Gary, and now the ability to raise your game in this FedEx Cup. It is just uncanny. Hey, he needs that money for his retirement. For which one of his great grandchildren? <laughs> uh, he's he's in another league, but um, sure he's grinding on this, Gary, just about as hard as any uh, of them. Uh, no question about it. He has often said he prides himself on giving 100 percent to every single shot. Got more break, isn't it? Uh, Scott missed the putt. Yeah, very similar. That. It broke mm -hmm. a lot left, huh? Might have lacked a little speed. So Tiger Woods heads to the 18th tee with a two-shot lead over Aaron Baddeley. After a solid drive to the middle of the fairway, Tiger Woods is eyeing his second shot. Well, he's got 119 to the hole, John. Wind yeah. coming from the left. I got to believe this ball lands behind the hole and spins back toward it. Yeah, he can land to the right because the fall line is actually long and right of the hole, six, seven feet, and it'll spin right down to the left by the cup. 355-yard drive. It's the longest drive all week on this hole. This ball flighted down right of the hole and deep. There's see the how much spin he gets on it. Well. Surely wasn't one of his best, but it's coming back. Shows you how quick the green is from up there. Yep. Good enough, probably. Especially, That's you know, smart it's, all, shot. it's all about W's for Tiger Woods. I mean, even amidst all of this FedEx Cup playoffs, he was asked about it. He says, if I just win and finish as high as I can, everything else will take care of itself. And look who is going to be in the driver's seat as we head to the final event. On the cusp of his 60th PGA Tour victory at the age of 31. And they pay homage to Tiger at Cog Hill once again. Six NBA titles for this city of Chicago and Tiger at Cog Hill has become a dynasty in his own right. Moments away from putting away a fourth title at Cog Hill and setting himself up for the biggest single bonus prize check in the history of sports. Well, he's played, week. he's played the best all year. If he's supposed to identify who's the best player, uh, he's already won five times. This will be number six with a major, the PGA. Uh, so the right guy is winning. The FedEx Cup, the playoffs, PGA Tour playoffs. He's got a putt here for a 62. His low round in his career, 61. He's done three times, but he's only put up two previous 62s. So even in Tiger's world, this is rarefied air here. His lowest final round. Is a 63 shot at four times, but only one of those to win, and that came at last year's Deutsche Bank Championship when he shot that sizzling 63 to win it. Well, this uh, eliminates all possibilities if he makes his putt. Badly could still hole out and make a two. So if he makes this, that makes it moot. It's not a free run, though. He's got to be careful with this one. Downhill, big slicer, left to right. Yeah. Just what he was trying to do. Tap in 63. Just a smart guy. A 
But he knows he's got to beat Phil Mickelson next week. And Phil has got a lot of confidence beating Tiger the way he did last week. Yep. Playing and with him three days. And for all you Tiger Phil aficionados out there, here's a scenario that could play out next week. But again, this, this is a scenario that would just involve Phil and Tiger Woods. If when Tiger wins this championship, we say win because he seems like he's headed for it. He would be 4,120 points ahead of Phil Mickelson as they went to Atlanta next week. So if Phil won the Tour Championship next week and Tiger finished second in that championship, Tiger would still win the Cup by 20 points. Oh, man. <laughs> Just another scenario to, scenario to kind of fantasize about. That is crazy. It's for a par for Rose. So a bogey into Rose's final round, three under, 68. But a solid position, heading to Atlanta. And that matches the course record, and that's the loudest roar we've heard all week for Tiger. Tiger Woods shoots a final round eight under 63 to claim his fourth victory at Cog Hill Golf and Country Club. And for his 60th career PGA Tour win, Woods is the 2007 BMW Championship winner and the winner of the third playoff event for the FedEx Cup. This concludes the PGA Tour's coverage of this week's race for the FedEx Cup and of the 2007 BMW Championship from Cog Hill Golf and Country Club in Lamont, Illinois.